Hi, my name is Lark Dunham. I'm a senior in animal science, and I'm going to be talking today about the unwanted horse. Unwanted horses have been an issue in past decades, with a recent sharp increase in numbers nationwide. Closure of the few remaining slaughter facilities in 2007 and the subsequent recession have only exacerbated the problem, with current estimates, according to Holcomb and others from 2010, reporting approximately 100,000 unwanted horses each year in the United States. According to the American Association of Equine Practitioners, in many cases, horses are no longer wanted by their owner due to injury, age, illness, temperament problems, or because they simply do not meet the owner's expectations. Here is a graph that showed reasons owners cited for giving up their unwanted companion horse, put together by the Unwanted Horse Coalition in 2007. And as you can see, could no longer afford the horse is the number one reason, followed by age, injury, unmanageability, and losing interest in the horse. Where are all these horses coming from? Since horses that go to slaughter are an extremely apparent example of an unwanted horse, Data about these horses was collected from 2002 to 2007 to answer this question. According to Lens from 2009, it was found that the majority of slaughter horses came from all different branches of the horse industry, with no one breed making up the majority. This shows that this issue does not stem from just one breed or segment of the horse industry. This is a problem that clearly spans all demographics and as such, the solution must come from all owners and horse businesses working together. The first solution that may come to mind are the many rescues, shelters, and sanctuaries across the United States. These equine facilities accept unwanted horses on a permanent or temporary basis, often offering rehabilitation, training, and adoption programs. However, Dee Foley of the American Association of Equine Practitioners estimates that the roughly 450 rescue facilities in the United States could, at maximum capacity, place between only 6,000 and 10,000 horses per year collectively. That's all of them together, not each one. And this is at most only 10% of the amount of horses that would need to be rehomed each year. There is also a lack of funding available, as it would cost approximately $230 million dollars to provide adequate care for the 100,000 unwanted horses each year. Even if money were no object, according to Crab from 2012, the fact is that 63% of rescues are at or nearing full capacity, taking in only 62% of horses relinquished to them. Other options for these horses, race horses could be retrained for dressage, cutting horses can become pleasure or trail horses, and they could also be donated to law enforcement, therapeutic riding programs, or university and veterinary teaching departments. Of course, no presentation about the unwanted horse would be complete with at least, without at least briefly discussing horse slaughter, and although U.S. slaughter facilities closed in 2007, horse slaughter is still another method to deal with these unwanted horses. A common misconception is that the closure of the facilities means that no U.S. horses are slaughtered anymore, when in fact, according to Crab from 2012, 138,000 horses were transported to Mexico and Canada for slaughter, roughly the same number of horses slaughtered in the U.S. before the facilities closed. Slaughter is appealing to many because instead of costing money like some of the other options, it allows the horse to be of some value to the owner even through its death. While it is true that the USDA no longer oversees the transport of horses out of the country, it was observed that in the 1999 study that in addition to fighting en route, previous owner and abuse and neglect was the cause of 77% of the horses arriving with welfare problems. However, without USDA oversight of the transport, it is likely that the horses do suffer inhumane conditions during transport and this concern is quite valid and probably a very likely reason that many horse owners do not even consider slaughter. This brings us to the option of humane euthanasia, 
but this is a problematic method as well due to the cost of carcass disposal. Some states do not allow burial, and in those that do, it may cost between $250 and $500. Some landfills will accept carcasses if they were not euthanized with a barbiturate overdose, with costs ranging from $80 to $500, not including transportation. Rendering is available in some states, with transportation often included in the fee of $40 to $250, but they do not allow horses euthanized with sodium pentobarbital to be rendered, as the end product is often commercial pet food. Incineration is available for $500 to $2,000. Biodigestion is a method that results in a non-toxic, hydrolyzed substance that can be used as fertilizer or placed in a landfill. And lastly, composting is a low-cost alternative to disposing of a horse carcass that produces a usable product in the form of soil fertilizer. According to Lens from 2009, this method can be take between six weeks and nine months and may be difficult to perform correctly. But no matter which option a horse owner chooses for carcass disposal, it is likely to be either expensive or labor intensive. Then what should be done? Prevention of unwanted horses comprises a large piece in solving this puzzle, and the Unwanted Horse Coalition is gaining momentum in its efforts to educate the public and raise awareness. In 2010, it began Operation Gelding, a program that assists organizations in sponsoring low-cost castration clinics where owners may bring their stallions. Each year, the group awards $50 per stallion with a total amount of no more than $1,000 to an organization wishing to host a clinic. The goal is not only to reduce the number of horses being bred each year, but to prevent the stallions themselves becoming unwanted by removing their aggressive nature and allowing them to be trained for a variety of settings. Clearly, a concerted effort including many options for unwanted horses needs to be in place. And the Operation Gelding project shows an excellent start a combination of humane slaughter, slaughter transport and methods, public outreach and education as demonstrated by the Unwanted Horse Coalition, intensified efforts by rescues and shelters, and increased awareness are excellent first steps to combating this growing problem in our nation. Horse owners from all walks of life and horse-related businesses from all industries must stand together to find humane solutions to the problem of the unwanted horse. Here are my references for your review. Thank you for your time. That one was worse. <laughs>